France was responsible for a lot of unconventional tank designs created in the first half of the 20th century. Tanks with oscillating turrets, 70-ton medium tanks, heavies with very thin armor. In short, the French made many bold choices, and some of those blew up in their faces in one way or another. Not because the ideas behind those designs were flawed, no. They were quite often quite brilliant, in fact, but because French engineers couldn't always solve all the problems that arose during development. And the saddest tale among them all was the tale of the French heavy tanks. The Char B1 is often considered to be the main representative of the class in pre-war France, but in 1921, when it was first conceived, the plan was to make a highly versatile medium tank for infantry support. The requirements for the new design were formulated by General Jean-Baptiste Destienne, the creator of the French tank arm, who believed that the battlefields of tomorrow would be dominated by heavy, versatile medium tanks. The Char de Bataille, or simply Battle Tank, was supposed to become the main tank of the French army. But its 13 years long development process was plagued with problems and complications. For example, there were lots of companies working on this new vehicle together, and they found it pretty difficult to deliver on a single vision. At some point, the whole project was almost dropped to give way for the lighter D2 tank that could be made at a fraction of the cost. In the end, the tank was accepted into service, but only in 1934. Its defining feature was its superior armor, but the production model had a weight of 32 tons, a big departure from the planned weight of 14 tons. The chassis, making the tank look a bit like the rhomboid tanks of World War I, proved to be finicky and unreliable. And the Char B1 didn't exactly excel in the firepower department. The most produced model of the vehicle, the Char B1 Bis, had even more armor, a 47mm anti-tank gun and a new engine. Unfortunately, the following B1 Tur variant, that had up to 70 millimeters of armor, never advanced past the prototype stage. During the Battle of France, it became clear that the Char B1 was not really fit for modern warfare. Even though in actual combat, a single B1 could destroy several Panthers, the tank couldn't save the Republic. As it was a very expensive vehicle, there simply weren't enough of them to make a difference. It's no surprise that, after the country was liberated, one of the top priorities of the new government was to rebuild the defense industry and make new tanks. The work on the tank that we know as Arl 44 started as early as 1944, and the first mock-up, based on the B1 and incorporating some new components, was ready in 1945. The plan was to produce the new tank in two variants. The first, with a 75mm gun in the ACL-1 turret, and the second, with a 90mm Schneider cannon. Pretty soon, it became clear that the first model was hopelessly outdated, and the second, with the bigger gun, required a new turret. All in all, the vehicle wasn't very reliable or easy to produce. As a result, the first ARL-44 left the factory floor only in 1947, and due to maintenance issues, it was accepted into service only in 1951. It was never used in combat. It was a hard pill to swallow, but all of that effort was not in vain as French weapons engineers gained a lot of valuable experience. After all, it wasn't all just about the Arl 44, they were also working on the AMX M4. They wanted to make a highly agile tank with lots of firepower and good armor. Yeah, 
basically the all-rounder that Estienne envisaged all those years ago. It's worth noting that in occupied France, engineers had to work on German vehicles and with German components. This arrangement influenced some of the choices made after the war as well, with overlapping road wheels and the use of Maybach engines being the prime example. Some of those influences could also be seen in the new Somur SM tank, made as a direct competitor to the M4. Both tanks were also equipped with oscillating turrets that had enough space for powerful guns and autoloaders. Eventually, the French government decided to proceed with the M4, which was developed into the AMX-50. But in War Thunder, we have both. The Somur SM is available to players as a Rank 4 premium vehicle. It's interesting that the AMX-50 was only recognized as a heavy tank in the mid-1950s. Its eventual weight of 54 tons came as a shock. Trying to make the giant more viable, the military started the development of the Surbice lowered modification. Then there was also the Surbrande, an armored variant proposed by AMX. The tank received a pike nose, as on the IS-3, an auto cannon and a 120mm gun with an automatic loading system, and additional 15 tons of weight. Not surprisingly, this variant was abandoned almost immediately after testing. The end result of the AMX-50 program was the optimized variant of the vehicle made in 1958. Even though it was considerably smaller than the earlier models, it still had thin armor and an outdated chassis design. So, in 1958, the French decided to drop it to pour resources into the new Europanzer initiative, which, as you know, also failed but finally paved the way for the true all-rounder that the French wanted to get all along, the AMX-30. The history of tank building simply wouldn't be the same without French heavy tanks. These vehicles, blending technologies developed abroad with French know-hows, like the iconic oscillating turret, are instantly recognizable. Which of them do you find the most interesting? We really like to know, so tell us in the comments below. Mm -hmm.